Hello, my name is Susan Mingle. I'm a clinical nurse educator with MedOne Group, and I'm here today to provide you a demo of the CME Bodyguard Multi-Channel Pump. As you can see, the pump is very small, very lightweight, and very compact. This device is perfect for EMS transport, and it's also certified for helicopter and airplane use should your patient need to be transported that way. The device is a smart device, which I'm sure most of you have heard of these types of pumps in the marketplace. This just means that should a clinician, a technician, program, miss a decimal, add too many zeros, there's safety software capable to let you know via an alert that you have stepped over the approved boundaries of what's safe to give for that medication. You can customize this drug library up to 100 drugs so that it matches and fits your practice. So I wanna tell you a little bit about the device. It is two pieces. You have the actual pump, which sits inside what we call a docking cradle. For our demonstration purposes, we're gonna leave the pump in the docking cradle, but just know that both of these pieces only weighs two pounds. Now the battery, it has a, a fully charged functionality to last eight hours at 125 mLs per hour running on both channels. You will get an alarm at 30 minutes to let you know that the battery only has that much time left so that you will need to plug it in. The plug is just underneath the cradle and we do recommend you plug it in as much as you can, knowing that sometimes you're not gonna be able to obviously because you're in and out taking the patients where they need to go. But just know that you will have that alarm. And I'll show you a little bit later on how you get to that in when we turn the pump on and go through the demo. So now we're gonna take a closer look at the back of the device. So I'm swinging the device around so you can see the back. So attaching the pump to the pole is done via this clamp. You simply just push down on it to roll it to open when you wanna take it off and then opposite, roll it back up when you wanna attach it. I do wanna show you here at the bottom and I'll turn this around so you can see. Each of the channels has a door and th this latch that you see on both channels, the white piece is where you're gonna lift it up to open it. And we'll show you that a little bit later when we talk about the disposables and priming the device. Also down here is your power cord. This is where you you'll plug it into the device when you're ready to charge it. So now we're gonna talk about the disposables. The disposables that go into the CME bodyguard pump are proprietary, so you have to use one of their sets, otherwise it won't work. They do provide a catalog of multiple sets. I'm using a set that is most commonly used in the country that has two ports, but should you need filter set or a half set, those are available as well. So now I'm gonna show you the anatomy of the main set that's used. So up top, you do have your spike to vent or non-vent. I'm using bag for our demonstration, so obviously this is closed, but if you're doing glass delivery, you would just open it. And then moving down the tubing is your check valve. Then you do have a needle-free port just below that. And now we're gonna take a little bit closer look at the pumping segment, at, as this is a very important component of loading and priming the tubing. So we're zoomed in on the pumping segment. You're gonna notice two things, a round blue circle, it's called a ring, and also a black piece that's called the key. These two are loaded into the doors of the pump and really there's no way to get it wrong because inside the pump, they're gonna match up to a circle and a little place that looks like you're snapping a puzzle piece into it. Just below the pumping segment is your second port, should you need that. And below that is your anti-free flow valve so you don't get any runaway bolus to the patient. And then lastly, at the very end of the tubing is going to be your end cap. So now we're going to actually load the tubing and we're going to be loading it into channel two on the device. So I talked earlier about the latch that's just below the door. You just put that down and swing the door open and you can see what I previously talked about. The circle where the ring goes and this little notched area where the key goes, like a puzzle piece. So I'm gonna start with the key first and you just snap that in. So you're aligning it up and it snaps in just like a puzzle would fit. And then raise it up and press this circle in and close the door. And that's all you have to do. So next we're gonna move on to a little bit of the buttonology on the pump, priming it, and then starting some infusions. So now we're gonna take a closer look at the buttonology on the face of the device. 
So first and foremost is this black button, on and off. Uh, that's obvious that you're gonna use this to turn it on and turn it off. Just like a traffic light, you're gonna have your start, okay button, which is green, your stop, no button, which is red, and down here, this orange button is the prime bolus, which we'll be using in just a few moments. Underneath on off is the channel. This is how you switch from channel one to channel two. Down here in the bottom right corner is a info button. And I'll talk a little bit more about this shortly. This is your numeric keypad. Notice that the two and the zero have arrows up and down. This is how you're gonna be scrolling through your drug library to find the drugs that you're wanting to infuse. Then this screen will just display as we're programming our dose, our rate, et cetera. And then these two large LED screens, when they're both in use, will display the rate in mils per hour. And then something that is called a little spoke will just go around and around, indicating that the infusion is running. If there's nothing running on the other channel, you won't see anything. If both are running, you'll have two spokes, two rates of mils per hour. So next, we're gonna talk about um, and actually turn the device on, prime the device, and get ready to start some infusions. So now we're going to turn the device on. I already have the tubing loaded, so we're going to go through the priming functionality. Before I turn it on, one thing on this device, when you turn it on and you're ready to start it on a new patient, you have to clear out the volume that was infused from that last patient because you're starting with a fresh patient. Those series of button pressing is gonna be pretty quick, so I wanted to explain it to you before I turn it on. So let's hit the black on off button. Quick diagnostic. I need to switch over to channel two. Then I'm gonna press stop no. I'm gonna press info. And I'm gonna clear out that volume that was given on that patient. So now I'm at zero. And now I'm ready to prime for my new patient. So I'm gonna press the prime. This is important to make sure you have disconnected it to the patient before you prime and then just press okay. Now, the default priming volume is 20. The majority of the sets that are used only have a priming volume of five to eight mLs. So in this case, I would just watch the end of your line where your end cap is for fluid to come through there. Then you can just press stop okay, and then we will be ready to program an infusion. So now we're in the screen we want to be in after we said okay once our tubing was primed. We're in the dose mode. This is where the drugs in the drug library are housed. So I wanna say, okay. And then I'm gonna be asked a couple things here. Am I resuming, press okay. Repeating, press no. So we don't want to resume the previous patient's information. So we're going to press no. Then it's gonna take us to the drug library. And this is where our arrow keys will come in handy. So I can press the two to go up and I can press the zero to go down. For this purpose, I'm gonna use dopamine to demonstrate using a drug in the drug library. So I wanna say, okay. Now is the volume of diluent 250? If it is, leave it there, cause it was probably used once before, or it's already set up in our demo data set this way. If it's not the volume you want, you simply just type over. I'm gonna leave it at 250 and press okay. I am using the concentration of 400 in 250. If this were not what is in your customized library, you would change it to whatever concentration you want simply just by typing it in. Then I'm gonna press okay. This get, nets me a concentration of 1.6 milligrams per mil. I press okay. Does my patient weigh 76 kilos? If your patient isn't 76 kilos, then you can just change it. Now I'm gonna change it to 88. Press okay. And this nets me a dose of 20 mics per kilogram per minute, and that's what I want. If you did not want 20, then you would just simply type in, let's say you just wanted 15. Then you would say, okay. And then your volume is 250, press okay. Now you're just gonna do confirmations to make sure everything that you have hanging is what's listed here. And you simply just confirm. And this is nice. This gives you the total time it will take based on the bag size and it's okay to confirm five hours and three minutes. So I'm just gonna press okay, and I'm ready to start my infusion. So now, as we mentioned before, you see the large LED screen. There's my rate in mils per hour, and there's that little spoke I talked about. So it's running, and then my LED is flashing over here, indicating that channel two is running. Now I'm gonna show you how the safety software works, and we'll pretend we're making an error. So I'm just gonna type in, the doctor says do 5.5, I'm gonna miss a decimal on purpose and put 55. I'm gonna press okay. And there you can see 
that the dose is above the max and I need to press info to go back. And now what I'm gonna do is make sure I do 5.5. Now I'll press start. And now it's automatically adjusted my rate and I'm good to go and I've averted an error if it was a typo. So now we're gonna start another infusion. So we need to toggle over to channel one and we're already in the dose mode, which is where our available drugs and fluids are housed. I'm actually just gonna do a um, IV fluid. And what I have loaded on this channel is just what we call a cheater set. So we don't have to go through that whole scenario again. So it's already primed, it has fluid in it, so we're ready to go. That's why we're at this screen. So I'm gonna press OK. And just as we did before, there's that resume, press OK, which we're not gonna do. And because an infusion uh, information from the previous patient on that channel is still in there. So we're gonna go ahead and say no. And now we're in our drug library. Again, our toggle up and down keys. So I'm gonna look for my IV fluids. And let me scroll back up because I think they're in, in this demo data set, I think they're up here and there's IV fluids. So I'm gonna choose okay. And um, I'm gonna run at 150 an hour. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna do my bag size, uh, 950, it's good to underestimate so that you'll have time to um, react to a KVO alarm and not run your bag dry. So I'm gonna say okay to that. And then all I have to do now is press okay. And it's gonna take six hours and 20 minutes for that bag to go into that patient. So I'll say okay. And I'm gonna start that infusion. So now we have both LED displays with our rates, our spokes, and this is the one that I had just used, so it's uh, blinking on the channel one side. Next, we're gonna talk about the things that you can find out on the info button. Okay, so before we talk about the uh, blue information button, I just wanna share with you that the flow rate ranges of the device are 0.1 up to 1200 mLs per hour. So now we have a physician order to discontinue the dopamine. The patient was on a really low dose anyway, and their blood pressures are doing good. So I'm gonna show you how we turn off channel two that's infusing the dopamine. So we know we use our arrow keys to toggle over to channel two, and it's blinking. That's how I know I'm on two. I'll do that again for you. If I hit that arrow key, I know I'm on the one side. I hit it again, now I'm on the two side. So I simply just say stop, press and hold the channel off, and I'm turning off my dopamine. So now let's look at that blue information button. So I'm gonna press the button, and I can see how much of my maintenance fluid has infused, and how much is remaining. I can see my battery level, so I'm pretty full right now, so even if I'm unplugged, I'm okay to keep it unplugged, but it's always recommended you plug it in when you can. The time left for my volume to infuse is six hours and 11 minutes. This also gives you the date and the time, and then the actual pressure in the line in milligrams of mercury. This can be adjusted if you need to change it based on your uh, patient's veins and the pressure in the fluid going in. And then it automatically flips back to the main screen. Next, we'll talk about some of the common alarms. Air in line is one of them. Should you get that alarm, you simply just press the stop no button and then hit your prime bolus so you can prime the air out of the line. You wanna just make sure um, you have a syringe so you could pull the air out of the closest port, or if it's below the port, then you would just need to disconnect it from the patient. Another alarm, and I'll demonstrate that one for you, is if the door latch opened, and you're simply gonna get an alert in the LED screen that says you have an alarm, and then you just need to close the door. And then the pump will automatically resume by you pressing start okay. Another alarm you may get is a downstream occlusion pressure. So with that alarm, you just wanna make sure that your line is uh, unkinked, patent, then you would just come back up and press okay to start it again. The other um, alert you might get is KVO. For instance, when this 950 has infused, the device will alarm to let you know that it's slowing down to five mLs an hour. That is the default setting on this device. It can be configured from 0.1 to five mLs per hour for the default. You do have um, eight minutes to go get your subsequent bag or the alarm will occur again. 
And then one other one that comes to mind is the pumps unattended. This happens when you're in the middle of programming something and you may get distracted or you're not doing what you started out, you're not finishing what you started out doing, like you're programming the drug and then you get distracted and you stop. The pump will beep and say it's unattended. You just come in and press OK and pick up where you left off. So now we're going to power down our maintenance IV fluid. We're going to press the stop red button and then our black off on button to power down. Hold it till you hear a beep and then release. This concludes our CME bodyguard pump demo. Appreciate your time so much. If you have any interest in this device and the disposables, please visit our website at www.medonegroup.com. Thank you.